The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us for the Momentum Development Live Webinar and Q&A session with CrowdStreet. My name is Hunter Meese, Investor Relations Manager here at CrowdStreet, and this afternoon, I'm pleased to have Jamie Temple, Jeff Temple, and Steve Hewlett, who will discuss the Brighton self-storage offering on the CrowdStreet Marketplace. After the short presentation, we'll open it up for questions, and at this time, all participants will be in a listen-only mode. If you have a question during the presentation or the Q&A session, please type it into the questions box, and we will ask it on your behalf. And with that, I'll let Jeff, Jamie, and Steve take it away. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. We're very pleased to be able to present our project in Brighton, Colorado, that's coming up, a CubeSpark self-storage facility that we'll build from the ground up starting this September. It should be done next August. We're very pleased with the initial feedback and the initial questions and also the initial response from everybody on the CrowdStreet platform. Um, this is our second major development 
also a CubeSmart project. We started with one up in Fort Collins, which we opened on July 18th. And it's very similar to the one we've got planned and we're about to build in Brighton, Colorado. So I'm gonna let my brother Jeff explain a little bit about momentum and who we are in our background and our history and development. Hi, this is Jeff and I echo Jamie. It's great to be with you guys and uh, with CrowdStreet here today. Uh, I wanted to tell you a little bit about our background. We've been doing real estate development since uh, about 1990. And uh, we've, we've uh, developed Storm Mountain Ranch uh, up, up in Steamboat Springs, Maribu up in Steamboat Springs, shared ranch communities, Uptown Broadway in Boulder, Colorado, which is loft style condo, condominiums and rental apartments, water dance on Lake Dillon, which is another uh, master plan community of 30, um, 33 acres with 38 townhomes and 55 single family lots. Most recently, Westline Flats, which we're in the process of selling. It's 155 apartments in Lakewood, Colorado. Uh, beautiful project, uh, TOD. And then in 2016, we bought Bennett Mini Storage. And what we began to see as we did our apartment and multifamily development is that we uh, were able to make more money, get a better return if, on self-storage. And so that really made us want to get into the business. We bought Bennett Mini Storage and we added, we, we constructed some new units there, worked on the management and really dove in uh, feet first into the business. And then uh, Jamie talked about a 83,000 square foot uh, Fort Collins Cube Smart we just next, finished. Next slide, please. And there's there's the Cube Smart up in Fort Collins. And uh, that project uh, came out really well and I'm very, very excited about it. And we'll tell you more about our experience with Cube Smart, but it was very positive from, from the get go. So, so, next slide, please. So, we've designed this project over the last two years. The PUD process started when we went under contract on the land back in 2016. Um, we've been ready to go with the City of Brighton. Uh, what we need to do now is go pull permits. We've already got several of the storm permits and other water quality permits as required by the State of Colorado. So. We're ready to close our loan as soon as we get our equity. And uh, we've designed this project in, with the help of CubeSmart along with Hauser Architecture. And we've got what we call a REIT ready or an industrial um, quality self storage facility that one of the big five REITs will be first in line to buy when we do get ready to sell and or a bunch of the various privateers with uh, portfolio holdings that they like to add these in. So we're convinced we've got the right project in the right location. Um, lots of traffic in the area, lots of new growth and new homes. And uh, we're happy with our, our design and our site. So we're looking forward to getting going. Uh, next page, renderings. So this is what the facility will substantially look like. We think these renderings are pretty nice. They almost look like photographs, but uh, when you drive by someday, uh, this is what it'll look like. So it doesn't really look like storage from the street, but by the time you read the CubeSmart sign and see some of the false doors through the windows of the storage, which helps advertise it on the drive-by, you'll know that it's a self-storage project pretty well. Next slide, please. Okay, on the, on the deal summary, um, one thing we want to emphasize, uh, Jamie and I are Colorado natives, and we really concentrate on the Colorado, Colorado real estate market, and especially the front range of Colorado, uh, which is growing so fast right now. And our self-storage strategy is pretty simple. Uh, we find a site with a high barrier to entry. Uh, we want to find a site where feasibility experts in the field agree that demand exists and we have such a site there in Brighton. Uh, Jamie talks a little bit about how we were able to go through a PUD process when we first walked in to talk to the city of Brighton 
uh, about the site, they said there won't ever be a, a self-storage there. Well, a year, actually about a year and a half later, we were successful in going through the PUD process and having self-storage approved. It was right in the middle of a lot of housing. It's a great location. And we team with uh, best-in-class architect, Hauser Architects, a uh, great operator, CubeSmart, and a great builder, GYS. And we produce a purpose-built facility, which is really grade A. Construction time on this is 11 to 12 months. Our minimum investment is $25,000. Uh, projected investor IRR is slightly different than on the CrowdStreet uh, portal, we're at 20.5%. That's because we use an XIRR calculation. Um, projected total equity is 2.95 million. The equity multiple will be 2.45 over five years to sale. I think we could sell earlier than that. And uh, that's, that's my summary on that. Next um, slide. Okay, we will uh, supply 10% of the required equity or $295,000. And one thing we were wanted to control as far as risk is concerned, we know interest rates are going to go up. We were able to work with A and B Bank, our local bank in Boulder and lock our interest rate for five years. I think it's very valuable. And in addition to that, we're able to get years one, two, and three at interest only, which is advantageous. And the interest rate is 5.5% for the five-year term. It might be slightly lower than that, actually. It's a recourse loan with AMB Bank, and uh, Jamie and I both sign personally on that debt. The IRR hurdles are, you know, 8% return uh, preferred. Then between 8 and 15%, the split is 70% to the, the investor, 30% to the sponsor. And above 15%, it's 50-50 on that split. Okay. Next slide, please. You know, the cap rate is at sale. That's projected five years from now at a six cap. And when we attain the numbers in our pro forma, just over a million dollars of net operating income, the six cap will get to $17,203,732. Now, obviously in five years time, it'll be a different number. We'd like it to be a little bit better. As of today, if we were selling, uh, we'd be in the low five cap rates. It was the same facility with the same NOI. We know interest rates are going up. And so conservatively, we've, forecasted a 6% CAP, and we hope we do better. So um, that's that's our target. We'll do that well or better, and if we do that well, then all the numbers in the model come true, and uh, that's what we're, that's what our plan is. Next slide, please. Okay, and the sources and uses, um, we've got, as a subset of these numbers, we've got a TMP contract with our contractor GYS for seven million three eighty nine two hundred. That's also on the development budget in the operating memorandum. But in that seven point three eight nine million, there's one hundred fifty seven thousand dollars of contingency by that general contractor. And then also as a developer, we have contingencies totaling four hundred twenty five thousand. So we can be off by as much as five hundred seventy five thousand dollars and not have a bust on our development budget. Um, we feel that's a conservative contingency, more than enough to cover for a lot of reasons. And one of the key reasons is our offsites, you know, the street improvements and the entry drives were done by our master developer and not by us. So that's a really nice uh, benefit for us. We don't have a major development agreement with the city of Brighton that we have to see through. And uh, we're, we're pleased with how that project has come together that way. And this one it's going to be a good one that way. Next slide. Next slide. Okay. Just for a second. Um, well, okay. um, our market demand is strong, and we tend to go out to industry experts um, 
and, and get the, a market study done professionally. We used Stephen Ross. Uh, he was he's one of the best guys in the business. He was actually the vice president of operations at Extra Space uh, for four years. And his market study uh, really gave us confidence that there's a lot of demand in the market uh, and pent up demand. And if you look at the bottom of this page, he actually is showing that he thinks uh, will be fully leased within 22 months after we complete the uh, construction of the project. So in, in we have a lot of excess market demand. Uh, Steve likes to use the Colorado average of self-storage supply of 9.14 square feet per person. The U.S. average is 6.77. And it, Whichever number you use, there's a, a ton of excess demand. We've got a great site with, with uh, that's you know, really crying out to be built. Uh, we have household income is good at $78,702. And our area population in 15, 2015 was 46,861 people, which was an increase of 12% from 2010. And the forecasted increase for the next five years is another 14.18%. And this is why all the national growth is only 3.7%. Another thing I'd like to point out is that Stephen Ross uh, zeroed in and triangulated on a uh, rental lease rate of $1.31 a month, which is also what CubeSmart, very close to what they came in on, and is close to what we're using also in our pro forma. Next slide. I wanted to show this this slide for a minute to take a look at all the residential development that's either in process or is already in place. So you have multifamily in blue and then regular housing, single family detached in red. And then uh, our site is uh, kind of the, the flag over on the upper right. So we've got just a ton of of uh, uh, residential uh, people living around. This Google map is a little bit dated also. Sometimes things are already built that are under construction or the ground's been broken. And there's more going on very near our site than this slide indicates. There's a lot of growth in the area. Um, Brighton is a bedroom community for Denver. It's an easy commute down Interstate 76 back into the downtown. You can be in downtown Denver in less than 30 minutes, and uh, it's a good alternative for housing costs. It's a four to five hundred thousand dollars starting home price, whereas if you go the other way on Highway 36 to Boulder, it's about a million dollar starting price for a home. And and uh, so Brighton's a good um, fast growth bedroom community for Denver. Okay, we can take a look at the next slide. This shows the other uh, competitive storage and, and how far, you know, within a five mile radius. And I would point out that actually Sable Self Storage, second or third one down, shows on this chart a 10% vacancy. They're doing better than that now. They're, they're probably more like a six or 7% vacancy now. And then Pony Express at 11.9, they had a fire recently and built new units and we're getting them leased up there way lower uh, they can see than the 11.9 percent now like our point is that all the competitors are very full and the other thing is most of these uh, competitors except for sable are older um, 90s construction early 2000 construction and so we're going to be uh, a much nicer facility when we're built more competitive next slide It's got you on there. I'll do it. Um, again, we talk about how, you know, what our approach is for self storage. We get a great architect. Um, that's Hauser Architecture. They've designed some wonderful projects in Colorado, over 2 million square feet. Uh, very good builder, GYS. Um, they've 
they focus exclusively in building self-storage. And Lee Frederick is a proven, uh, very experienced individual in the industry. Uh, Barry Sherman will be our project manager. He's got over 25 years in the business. He owns self-storage himself. He's designed or built over 100, 148 million worth of self-storage facilities. He helped us with our Fort Collins project. He was invaluable. He was really a great asset. Uh, CubeSmart, we interviewed multiple large management companies. CubeSmart was a wonderful fit for us. Uh, we love their people, we love their systems, their management, uh, their overall approach. Um, and with Brighton, as soon as we saw the site, we engaged CubeSmart. What do you think of this market? How big should this facility be? Should it be multi-story? How much climate control should we have? We really let them help us design uh, a great project, get that in place. So. And next slide. Yeah, so CubeSmart on this slide is half a year old or more, and it says 936 properties under management are owned. It's now around 1,025 properties, and uh, it's about just over 500 owned and 500 and some third party managed. So we're in that third party managed category. Well, this will be our second one with CubeSmart. Uh, again, Jeff said it before, we're happy with them and, and thrilled with them in most ways. Um, off to a great start in Fort Collins. We expect the same kind of management and results in Brighton. And uh, their web presence is very powerful. They help dominate an area and we're already seeing that up in Fort Collins. And uh, the same should occur in Brighton. There's nobody in Brighton that's what we call a national REIT managed property. There's one regional manager up there at Sable Storage and uh, they've done very well. They're they're leased up in about 18 months on that site, a little over three miles away from us. It's actually five miles on a Google search, but 3.2 is the crow flies. Um, CubeSmart is an industry leader with their sales center. When, when you call the phone number, somebody answers and knows everything about how to sell self-storage and how to get that renter to go ahead and come in with their things and belongings and rent a unit. And same with the revenue management program. You've probably heard that if you've listened to other self-storage presentations, the revenue management is very important. And uh, CubeSmart, I think, may be the best in the business at it. They're able to take a look at what's going on in the market and set prices accordingly and adjust them very, very often. And that's, that's it for now. We'll open it up to the Q&A. Thank you. Uh, so now we'd like to open it up as a Q&A session, but as a reminder to the audience, please type your questions into the question chat window and we'll be sure and ask the questions on your behalf. And Jeff, Jamie, and Steve, I'm also going to open up uh, this presentation. Um, feel free to let me know if there's any slides in particular you'd prefer me to focus on uh, during the Q&A well, session. Slide nine is a good one for the yeah, right there. Some people Excellent. ask if this is, is a recession proof. I had, had an email written question last week from one of the investors. And, you know, from a, a lender perspective at the Inside Self Storage show last year or last spring here in April in Las Vegas a few months ago, um, it's just a rock solid business in, in commercial real estate. It's better than every other class by quite a lot. And uh, if you can go to that slide 11, also speaking to the recession resistance, if you will, 12, I think. Yeah. So during recession, sometimes you see the occupancy nationwide. Now this is a nationwide slide. It's not regional specific to Colorado or, or the Rocky Mountains, but nationwide, it, sometimes it'll dip to the 75% level, but um, Denver did better than that. It stayed above 80% all the way through the last recession in 2008-2009 um, and right now it's very strong occupancy nationwide and again nobody's recession proof but i think self-storage is resistant to the downturn it's it's helpful 
they have a category or, or an asset class like this. Not that we're projecting a recession. We sure hope there isn't one. Next question. Excellent. Yeah, uh, what I'd like to do is I'm going to pull up the CrowdStreet detail page while we go through some of the Q&A, unless you'd like to stay on this slide deck, um, or I'm happy to go between the two. But one thing I wanted oh, to touch all, on. And, that's all we ahead. need on this one. That's all we need on this one. Excellent. Well, while I'm getting up the offering page, um, we finished off with CubeSmart. An investor reached out wanting to understand um, if there's any other competitors in the market that you explored that are also climate controlled. Um, Sable Storage, um, 3.2 miles away, has some uh, climate control. They've done okay with it. They haven't sold it correctly, and it's a long story about how to manage these properties and how to sell the property. But yeah, there's a little bit in the marketplace, but not very much. Not very much. It's a good opportunity and, for us. And I understand you went through some extra hurdles to get this project approved by the city. Um, do you know of any other projects that have also been approved recently? We just talked to the planner that worked with us in Brighton and asked him yesterday, actually, are there any other projects in the queue? And he said none that, are, that he's aware of. There's nothing going on. There was one that was in the queue about a year ago that's languished and stalled out and there's nothing else that he's got on the planning docket so right now everybody would be a year or more behind us uh, to come on with a new project and that's if they decided they wanted to try to come into our market area which i don't think they would do most likely a lender would would keep a competitor out away from us um, wouldn't wouldn't provide the financing because it would be too much competition right in that area we're, we're going to cast a pretty big net around the area with this project. Excellent. And I understand you all are fairly local to this project. It's a short drive away. Um, would you mind sharing a bit more about why you chose Brighton for this project? It's a fast growing area with a lot of opportunity. And we specialize in finding sites that others might be missing. It wasn't listed for sale by any realtors. We, we did buy it through a realtor, but it never hit a listing. We knew the seller. Um, and so before anybody else could get the property, we went ahead and tied it up just based on the fast growth of the new housing in the area and the fast growth of Brighton overall. We really liked the site and our feasibility study and our uh, appraisal both verify that. Also the location is, it's not a location you would expect for self storage. It's real close to, uh, other nice retail and, and other really very nice housing. Um, again, the story that initially the planner said there probably won't be self storage allowed there. And we went through a pretty arguous year and a half of the PUD process to have the zoning change to allow for self storage. Ironically, the neighboring houses supported us in the self storage. They didn't want a big apartment complex next to them with the lights and the traffic and all that. They, they preferred a quieter self-storage user. Excellent. Would you all be able to share when you expect to break ground on this facility? Within a week, once we raise all of our equity, we, we expect to get that equity in by September 17th to 20th, somewhere in there. Um, we, we still like to break ground inside of September. Um, it could push back. It just depends on this equity raise. Um, we're raising a million to a million two ourselves with our usual friends and family investors and our own $300,000. So we're counting on Crowd Street for about a million eight. Um, we've got about 300,000, I guess, 265,000 in offers as of last night or this morning so we're making good headway um, but we've got a ways to go we've done about 15 percent of the raise with crowd street and so to be determined based on the success of the raise but our friends and family uh raise is going very well excellent um and would you all be able to share some of the biggest risks you see with this project well, of course, we, we try and control as many risks as we can. One of those is that interest rate risk. And 
locking it down for a five-year period, we feel pretty good about that. And um, taking a look at the other competitors, a high barrier to entry makes us feel good about our project. It, even if someone wanted to put a self-storage close to us out in Brighton, uh, in most cases, they're going to have to rezone the land, and that's not very easy to do. Um, or have an inferior site. So there's always risk in ground up development. Things can go wrong, but these self storage projects are a little bit simpler construction than most. Not that the climate controlled is so simple, but um, it's not quite like building condominiums or multifamily apartments with the, the attention to detail and um, they go together pretty well. We've picked a really good builder. We have a fantastic project manager and CubeSmart is a wonderful operator. Those are all areas of risk that we've really mitigated. Excellent. And for those that are newer to self-storage, uh, would you be able to share why it takes approximately three years to get cash flow to investors? Sure. It's, it's about an 11 to 12 month construction period once we break ground. So we'll close the loan and, and give our contractor direction to commence constructing. And then um, 12 months later, we'll open. And then when we have 765 units, you can lease, give or take, 40 a month. And it'll take a good 24 months to lease up and then be uh, stabilized. So that's why it takes three years, one year to build and two years to, to stabilize. Excellent. And I know we went over this a little bit in the presentation, but could you all touch on a little bit further as the local population growth in this area? Sure. Um, we have good statistics in our appraisal as well as our market study with Stephen Ross, but um, I think the most important thing for, for me anyway, this is Jeff, is that we have a lot of excess demand um, based on the amount of population that we have right now. We don't have to depend on future growth. Which future growth is going to be fantastic, but uh, we don't have to depend on that future growth yet. So we're, we're, we're project. We're forecasting 15% population growth over five years, average at 3% per year, which is way above the national average. And Brighton would grow faster if you could build the houses more quickly. We're struggling with labor to build homes in Colorado and frankly nationwide. So it's just a fast growth area. Excellent. And we're getting through some of the last questions. I just want to let investors know if you have any other questions you'd like to ask to please enter them at this time. Um, I think you mentioned during the webinar as well, but one investor was asking if you could share kind of the average home price in this area. Well, the median home price, I'm not certain, but all the signs in the area say starting at $400,000 on the new homes which means they're really 450 to 5, 525 is what a new home would cost in the area. Um, some of the older homes would be 350 to 400. Also, this is Jeff again. Back to the growth just real quickly. From 2012 to 2017, the jobs actually increased by 19.9%, which is very, very good job growth. And of course, job growth drives population, drives self-storage success. Excellent. And one investor was wondering if you could share if the cap rate slipped at all, how that would affect the returns on this particular project. Well, back to that slide that we had there. Um, I don't know which one it was of, of yours. Let's go back to that. Right. We had a cap rate slide that was about the third or fourth one in. Here we are. It's 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 number fifteen in the bottom right, but there's a cap rate. There it is. You got it. Yep. So if the cap rate slips, you know, to six and a half percent, for example, we'd be at just under 16 million down from 17 million. So 
it's important that we attain the 6% cap rate. But again, today, if we were selling with the same NOI, we'd probably be at the five and a quarter percent cap rate. And uh, splitting the difference between 18.7 and 20 million 600, call it 19 million. Um, so we really like to think we're okay on that. Um, we do expect to have return on cost of 8%. So if we need to hold the asset for a while till cap rates uh, get back in order, we're not forced to sell. We're, we're making good cash flow as we own this property. So that's what we, you know, we have that as a fallback is keep it and make money. Um, but yeah, that's 6% we believe is conservative. Excellent. And an investor was wondering if it's possible to start leasing spaces prior to the completion of construction. Um, and I understand this is a CubeSmart project, but if you had any insight into that, that would also be helpful. Well, we always like to think it's possible. It's a challenge. CubeSmart did a heck of a job for us in Fort Collins at 25 or 30 units leased on day one. And that's because they dominated the internet for the prior 60 days and showed a great facility and people actually made reservations ahead of when we got open. So it was a, it was a pretty great experience. We can't get very far ahead of it, but it, it, it was actually a pleasant surprise to see how quickly the first units were leased up. Excellent. And while we've got the OM up, another investor was hoping we could just go over the waterfall one more time. So I've pulled up the deal economics again. If you wouldn't mind just reviewing uh, the different tiers and the preferred return, I think investors would appreciate that. Sure. So um, all the initial cash flow would go against the 8% preferred return until that's met, until that uh, hurdle is met. And then the next distribution is 100% return of all the invested capital. And once that's met, you've got 8% return and all the capital that was invested. And then between 8 and 15, the, there would be a developer promote of 30%. So 70% to the investors and 30% to the sponsor developer. And then after a 15% IRR is attained, the split, um, goes to 50-50 above 15%. So that's how we get to the 20.45 on our pro forma or 19.9 on the uh, portal for web, or excuse me, CrowdStreet. Um, it's not real, real complicated, but you have to hit each hurdle before the next one is uh, begins to pay. Excellent. And any investors that would like uh, to learn more about IRR or waterfalls, please don't hesitate to reach the CrowdStreet Investor Relations team, and we'll happily walk through that with you. Um, another investor was hoping to focus on the sources and uses again. Um, I understand you all have taken uh, a conservative approach um, with various construction contingencies, um, but if you wouldn't mm -hmm. mind sharing um, if, what contingencies are in place for uh, if it takes longer than expected to rent up the facility and um, if lease rates uh, are lowered at all? Good question. And uh, so we've got around $800,000 for um, interest reserve during lease up after the completion of the project and another $150,000 of operating deficit. So we think that that interest reserve and the operating deficit combined at 800,000 is adequate to cover that. Um, I guess if we got out three years during lease up, we could be a little tight on cash flow, but we start to see positive cash flow pretty early in the, in the process. So it could happen at the end of one year, but certainly by the end of two years, we should be cash flow positive, including debt service. Excellent. So something I'd like to do now is I'm going to pull up the CrowdStreet detail page again before we wrap up. A handful of investors have reached out about uh, when funds are due and so forth. So one moment while I switch over. Um, but while I'm switching over, if you all could briefly share, um, you know, when you expect all investors to make offers by as well as uh, remit their funds, um, that would be helpful. Well, we've got offers due by September 12 and, and get the money in by the 19th of September. Um, 
we we think that's reasonable and attainable. Our early uh, results here on the Ground Street platform are, are generating enough money that we'll attain that if we keep going at the same rate. But we don't know how this works. This is our first project with Crowd Street. So we're hopeful and, and uh, we think we'll be able to stick with those timelines. Excellent. Well, Crowd Street is incredibly excited to be working with Momentum Development. And for all the investors, I'd just like to highlight that if you have any follow-up questions on the project detail page, which is currently showing on your screen, just below key deal points and uh, to the right of the investment portion is this questions box. If you have any questions that you like answered by Momentum Development directly or the CrowdStreet Investor Relations team, you can type your question into this box and it'll send an email directly to both parties. And with that, I think we're gonna wrap things up here. I just wanna be sure and say thank you, Jeff, Jamie, and Steve. And we look forward to continuing this fundraising process. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for attending you, everyone. We appreciate it. All right, goodbye. Bye-bye.